Lucid dreaming is easier than you think. I should know I'm a lucid dreamer. In this video, I wanna to talk to you about some of my favorite tips on how you can lucid dream tonight, even if it's your first time. Hey everyone, I'm Dr. Michael Bruce, the sleep doctor here. There is so much to explore with lucid dreaming. I wanna dig into some of the really fascinating science behind how and why we lucid dream. Then, if you've never done it, I wanna to explain to you how you can use science to try it out tonight. First, let's define what lucid dreaming is actually all about. Very simply, it's the ability to recognize and control dreams, kind of like being the director in your own movie. People that lucid dream often do some superhuman feats. I've heard stories of people flying, performing acts of strength. Sometimes they even engage in romantic scenarios. You can dream all kinds of things, but a lucid dream, you need two different things, self-awareness inside the dream and control inside the dream. Both need to be present for a dream to actually be considered lucid. You could be self-aware of dreaming, but not actually have control of your dream, and that really wouldn't meet the definition of lucid dreaming. During non-lucid dreams, these experiences seem very, very real. But in lucid dreaming, you experience something called metacognition in the dream state. This means that you retain the ability to think about your own thoughts, emotions, and behaviors while still sleeping. So what happens to the brain when we lucid dream? Well, first of all, this usually occurs in the REM stage of sleep. There is an increased activity in an area called your prefrontal cortex. The prefrontal cortex is involved in conscious awareness, your, so like your sense of reality, your self-concept, so the sense of who you are, and it's also integral to both language and memory. So now, usually this area, to be fair, it's very inactive during sleep, but something is a bit different in the brains of lucid dreamers that helps kind of flip that switch, so to speak, on the prefrontal cortex. Now, we should also point out that while some people are more prone to lucid dreaming, there is also a link between lucid dreaming and some sleep disorders. For example, we know that those with narcolepsy tend to struggle with the boundaries between consciousness and unconsciousness. That's in part because narcoleptics have low what are called hypocretin levels. This is a substance that the brain actually helps it stay alert and keeps people from having REM at inappropriate times. Because of this, narcoleptics are much more likely to maintain awareness during their dreams and exert control. This can be particularly useful for those in narcolepsy as they experience sometimes vivid nightmares. Lucid dreaming may actually help narcoleptics cope with the nightmares by allowing them to feel some measure of control. There's also a link between lucid dreaming and another symptom of narcolepsy called sleep paralysis. Now, sleep paralysis is kind of a frightening condition that involves waking up and being unable to move or speak. Both lucid dreaming and sleep paralysis are connected to the transition out of REM sleep. This is actually really good news for those who experience sleep paralysis. While the condition is typically associated with kind of higher levels of stress and a little bit lower sleep quality, remember, lucid dreaming offers a more positive experience and that can make sleep paralysis just a little bit less scary. Even if you don't fit the typical profile of a lucid dreamer, you can still become one and there are good reasons why you might wanna try lucid dreaming. Some scientists, sleep experts, and therapists are interested in its therapeutic applications. So working intentionally with lucid dreamers can be effective in reducing the intensity, frequency, and emotional intensity of nightmares. That's because the dreamer can effectively push back against the negative and disturbing narratives. Lucid dreaming is also thought to enhance creativity. Imagine mining your dreams in order to unlock your creative powers. So let's say this all sounds intriguing, but you've never had a lucid dream. That doesn't mean you can't. I've got some ideas that can help you set the stage. First, let's talk about mnemonic induction of lucid dreams, or what's called M-I-L-D. This involves mentally telling yourself Number one, you'd like to have a lucid dream. And this is often used in conjunction with the wake back to bed technique. Here, you intentionally wake up after approximately five hours and then go back to sleep. During that time that you're awake, you repeat the phrase to yourself to induce a lucid dream. So for example, you say to yourself, in my next dream, I will be aware that I'm dreaming. This technique is the one that I personally use. Basically, I tell myself I want to lucid dream. So before falling asleep, I say something like, you know, I will remember I'm dreaming or I want to be present in my dream and solve a problem. Um, sometimes that's all it takes to kind of prime my body to maintain awareness and control in the dream state. There's another technique called S-I-L-D-T. Now, that's a similar technique to wake uh, back to bed, but it's called senses initiated lucid dream technique. 
It also involves waking up after about five hours of sleep. But instead of repeating a phrase to yourself, you'll focus on all the senses, so sight, touch, and sound before you fall back asleep. We think that by increasing your mental attention to these different sensations, you're more aware of the sensations in your dream after you fall back to sleep. Another thing I also often recommend is to try keeping a dream journal. Start by writing down any details of the dream that you have, like the people, places, and events. Even the feelings or emotions you had throughout the dream itself can be helpful. A journal can actually help you track recurring themes and symbols in your dreams. This is an important step to lucid dreaming. It helps you become more attuned to the content and quality of your dreams. It also can act as a map to your own kind of dream world so you recognize dreams when you're in them. Aside from its potential for lucid dreaming, it's also a great kind of self-care therapeutic practice. Now, another technique that you can try is something called reality testing. This involves testing yourself throughout the day to differentiate between sleep and waking. So for example, you might ask yourself multiple times throughout the day, am I dreaming? Or you might wanna check clocks to see if they're acting kind of normal or are they not changing in time? Or practice holding your breath to test if you're in reality or not. The technique that I used was I drew an X on the back of my hand and I glance at it throughout the day. When you're dreaming, you don't see the X on your hand. And that's how you know you're in a lucid state. I found this to be very, very helpful. The idea here is that repeatedly testing yourself eventually seeps into your dreams and you can achieve some lucidity and distinguish between the dream state and the waking state. Another thing that you could do is you can try adding vitamin B to your diet via supplement or certain foods like salmon and chickpeas. So interestingly enough, B6 helps keep your nervous and immune systems healthy. In a 2018 study from the University of Adelaide, they found that B6 may help people increase their ability to remember their dreams. And remember, people with a stronger dream or recall are more likely to have lucid dream experiences. So adding some foods rich in B6 can actually help boost the quality of your sleep, but also the potential for lucid dreamers. I think it's kind of a win-win. Of note though, some people can have a negative reaction to B6 supplements, so do me a favor and check with your doctor. Finally, you might have seen these things on the internet called lucid dreaming masks. These look like kind of a normal sleep mask, but inside they feature built-in sensors that monitor your sleep stages. Since lucid dreaming generally occurs in REM sleep, they'll monitor uh, you and then when you enter REM, then they'll gently alert you with cues to raise your awareness. So there could be audio cues, it could be some type of a vibration or even visual cues like LED lights flashing in the mask. The goal is to simulate you just enough without waking you up to help you enter into the dream environment. So I've tried a few of these and I got to admit, they actually worked really well. Um, the one with the flashing light was the one that seemed to work the best for me. Just keep in mind that lucid dreaming takes practice. You'll gain more mastery over time, especially if you make a habit out of the tips that we talked about today. When we dream, we enter a world that is only bound by our creativity. And even then, we experience some wild stuff. I'd love to hear in the comments if you lucid dream and what techniques you use to do it. And of course, let me know what lucid dreams you usually have too. This is Dr. Michael Bruce, The Sleep Doctor, wishing you sweet lucid dreams.